deeper connection to you. Awesome, and we are in. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome to the Experience Podcast. My name is Franklin Daly. I am senior pastor of Cornerstone Community Church. And to my right, your left, <laughs> is the blue-eyed bandit, Pastor Chris McKinney. I'll take it. Yeah. I'll take it. And to my left is... Stealing this, hearts and your wallet. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And to my left, your right, is the amazing, towering teddy bear. And behind us, you'll see... Some amazing students, Eliana just walked past, Carmen walked past. And if you see behind us what we got going down, it's it's about to go down. Pastor Chris, if you would let us know what we have going, oh, yeah. going on this behind is, us. This is Vacation Bible School. It's happening right now. We are transforming uh, C3 to be, um, this This is the um, the Arizona desert with the, the monuments. Yes. Um, and where it's going to be, uh, our VBS this year is called Monumental. Uh. We're talking about rock solid faith. And this is going to be a great time for kids ages 3 to 11 to come and experience uh, who Jesus is and in the context of community and just an amazing yeah. experience that we're going to have in the evenings. So this is an evening VBS. Uh, starts. We have dinner at 5, starts at 6, goes till 8.30. Yeah. And uh, Monday through Thursday. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be amazing. It's about to go down. Listen, registration is still open. Mm -hmm. If you've got some yeah. grandkids, nieces, nephews, daughters, yep. sons, whatever, neighbors, Get them in, get them registered. Yep. Um, it's going to be an amazing time. And it is free. <laughs> yes. <laughs> VBS is free. VBS, as known in the hood of, of churches, <laughs> he said vacation Bible schools, this is VBS, and it's about to go down. Yes. So we have the Arizona desert. desert. PTSD flashbacks <laughs> yeah. over here. Yeah. Not cactuses again. Yeah. <laughs> Pastor Mike is from Arizona. Yes. Um, I left for a reason. It's yeah, always trying to bring right. me back. It's <laughs> funny because we got Arizona behind us, but before us, yet before us, we have the reign of the Northwest. There which you is go. Amazing. That's amazing. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Today we have an awesome podcast for you guys. We apologize for not being with you last weekend, but we are back. Last week, excuse me, but we are back today. And we have began, we have begun a series here at Cornerstone Community Church. A while back and it's called um, the kingdom of heaven and what we talked about on Sunday was freedom and we talked about true freedom right within the context of the 4th of July and and celebrating the, the independence of the United States and the freedoms that we get to enjoy here in this nation but there is a freedom that Jesus offer offers us that goes so much deeper than um, geographical freedom or uh, freedom that that we get um, through rights and laws that are passed but it's a freedom that is intrinsic and that is a, that is eternal so today we get to look at uh, an aspect of that freedom and and I guess some could say one of the greatest aspects of that freedom and today we're gonna look at freedom from condemnation mm -hmm. and we're gonna look at some scripture that is found in Romans chapter 8 verses one through four and i'm going to read it and then we're going to be able to uh then we're going to begin our dialogue so thank you so much for joining us you can find us on all social media platforms well major social media platforms instagram facebook obviously right here youtube you can find us um and and you can you can find access to all of services and everything that we offer for youth and children's um celebrate recovery all the way across the board if you go to c3 experience.org or download or find us on the church center app download the church center app look for cornerstone community church c3 and you'll find us so with that here we go into the scripture it says this uh, reading from the new living translation so now there is no condemnation for those who belong to christ jesus and because you belong to him the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death and the law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the judgment of the law would be fully satisfied 
for us who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the Spirit. Mm. So, what do you think, Pastor Chris? You know, when I look at this verse, uh, or this, this set of verses, it, it just reminds me, just right off the top, it reminds me of how we don't have to be perfect to come to Christ. Yeah. We don't have to, we don't have to clean up our life. We don't have to, you know, get, get better, clean up all these things. We can come to Christ just as we are. Yeah. And he, you know, Jesus came for us in our current state. The word says while we were still sinners, yeah. he died for us. Yeah. So because of that, there is no condemnation. Right. So that's, that's something I love about um, this particular passage. Yeah, that's awesome. Pastor Mike, what do you think? I think part of it for me is we tend to condemn ourselves more than anything else. Mm. This gives us that freedom that Christ doesn't have any condemnation for us because of what he's done. Yeah. There's no condemnation for us. So we can we can ease up on ourselves. Yeah, that's we good. don't need to beat ourselves for stuff that we did three years ago. Right. 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 Um, Christ has already forgiven it. He's let it go, so yeah. we should too and move forward. That's right. And that's yeah. and that's hard. You know, that's a difficult thing to do, yeah. especially when you are kind of confronted with the fallout of your bad decision making. Mm-hmm. You know, like mm-hmm. it's like um like I, in my own mind, sometimes I can treat myself like um, companies who loaned would would treat me because of because of my past credit score. Not anymore. My credit's good, right? <laughs> yeah. But you know, like like it's right. it's something that's that's always staring at you, mm-hmm. and your your mistakes or whatever it is in the past could be something yeah. that that keeps you in your own mind in bondage from moving forward, uh-huh. disqualifying you. Mm-hmm. You know, for the things that the Lord has already qualified you for, mm-hmm. and yeah. and this is this is like an what Paul is talking about is the Apostle Paul is talking about is the ultimate condemnation. Yep. So this is like the condemnation that he's talking about isn't isn't simply a self condemnation. The nope. self condemnation is supposed to be a, a is the lack or, or absence of self condemnation should yeah. be a byproduct of the absence of con- condemnation from the living God, right? Yep. Mm. Which is, this is like the ultimate condemnation. Yeah. But what he's saying is, is for those who belong to Christ Jesus, there is now no condemnation. And, and when it says no, it doesn't, it means like zero. Yeah. Mm. Zero. There's no residual. There's nothing that's kind of lingering in the background that'll come to bite us, that'll come to bite us when we stand before the king. There is now no condemnation for those that belong to Jesus. And then he says, and because you belong to him. Yeah. Because you belong to him. Now there's, 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 there's things that God is adding. So it's not even just this end result, right? This condemnation that will happen one day. He's like, there's, that's out of the equation, but because you belong to him, now there's, there's stuff that God is adding to your life. And it's, and it's the power of the life giving spirit that has freed us from the power of sin that leads to death. So I, I think it's interesting that what the apostle is bringing into the equation isn't, isn't just a verdict, but he introduces this, this word power, mm, yeah. that there's power connected to this thing. It's not just this ambient, mm. you know, um, um, ult- ultimate conclusion that will happen one day down the road, but it, yeah. but it is something that is power and is present. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, fi- I find that to be uh, yeah. pretty powerful. It starts now and has kind of eternal ringing. It yes. um, starts now and will go on for eternity. That's good. Yeah. Well, you think That's about good. what's happening at this time. You know, you've got the, the Jews who were following the set of laws, right? Yep. They had to, you know, their, their culture was, if I follow all these laws, I'm going to be made right. Because the law is what's going to is what's going to save me, you know. Right. Following it all, you have to excuse what's going on in the yeah. background here. <laughs> yeah, uh, so it sounded like a car crash. So, you know, <laughs> but Paul's, you know, Paul's message to the Gentiles was very different. You know, right. Christ has, and when Jesus came, He uprooted all of that. Yeah, we don't yeah. have to follow laws to be saved. Right, we can have a relationship with Christ, and so He's making a point that once you have been once you've made a decision for christ all of that is gone yeah there's no condemnation you don't have to follow a set of laws anymore to be right with god right you are you've been set free from that yeah. you know to live a life that's free for that's free of sin 
yeah. you know, you don't have to follow these these regimented laws that we were right. doing before and right. sacrifices and and offerings and all these things that they did. Like yeah. all that was gone. Yeah. All you need is Jesus and a relationship with Him. Amen. Amen. That's good. That's good. And it's and it's not a salvation either. Like sometimes we can get ourselves in a position where where we have to feel like we have to remain in God's good graces by continuing to 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 do stuff mm. like the Lord is is keeping a tally. Um, but the reality of it is 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 it's out of the relationship that we have with Him that we serve Him in all of these areas, keeping His word holy, keeping it sacred, loving like He calls us to love, forgiving like He calls us to forgive, not doing those things to earn. Like, right. like what James said is, is um, I'll show you by, I'll show you my faith by my works. Yeah. So it's not, you know, you show me your faith and I show you my works. I'll show you my faith by my works. Mm. So, so there's a, there's definitely a, a, a different perspective that the absence of this condemnation should give the, the body of Christ, right? Like this yeah. is, this is written to the body of Christ. This is so that believers can read this and say okay i'm not bound um by by working to avoid this condemnation because he says um, the law of moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature so the law reveals to us yeah. our own depravity I believe Paul writes in chapter 7 where, where he says the law, where, where sin sees the opportunity that the law presented um, as, as he came to understand what coveting was, mm -hmm. sin seizing the opportunity, it produced death because he recognized his own covetousness. Mm -hmm. So his flesh took, took advantage of right. this and the enemy used it as a weapon against, against him, which, which would create this chasm of separation. Mm. which is there until you belong to Jesus Christ. And now that condemnation that was, that was on the table, because it's on the table, yeah. yeah. unless you belong to Jesus, and then it's off the table. Yeah. The, uh, the law puts us in a state of having to try to figure out how good is good enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, because there's, there's got to be a dividing line that says, okay, I have done enough mm -hmm. yeah. to earn what, what right. God has promised me. Yeah, yeah. And then Jesus coming through kind of comes through and says, good enough doesn't matter. That's right. I yeah. matter. I'm I good matter. enough. And it, it, yeah. it takes that level of pressure off. So you don't have yeah. to focus on how good is good enough. All you need to focus on is being obedient, doing what That's God has right. called you to do. And like you said, allowing God's works in your life yeah. to be a testimony of what God has done for you. Yeah. When you remove condemnation from that, yeah. how good is good enough no longer matters. Right. Yeah. And you have right. to put action to that, too, because it's yeah. one thing to know that you're saved and set free. It's another thing to live that way. Right. Yeah. Because right. We, can, we can know something, but still, you know, we, we, don't, we don't, you know, reach out. We don't move toward what God has for us because we, we still believe things about ourselves that yeah. are not true. Yeah. So we have, to, we have to move forward with that understanding. So if I have been set free, then I should live like I'm set That's free. Right. And how, yep. and what does that even look like? Yeah. Like, how do we... Like, what are some things that we can do to live set free now that we know that? Right, right. You know, it, yeah, that's good. And and like like Pastor Mike is saying, like you know, like you're alluding to this this how good is good enough this idea, mm -hmm. which we don't even know the answer. No, right. Like it's difficult. I don't know the answer to good enough. I don't. I don't know what I could do to where the holy, living God says, you just did enough. Well, the, the, well, we know the answer. The only answer is you have to live a perfect life. Perfect, yeah, right. Perfect. So, which we don't even know what that even is. No, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. you have to live a life without sin. Without it, yeah. I can't do that on a daily basis, right. let alone in my life. Yeah. yeah. So good enough is it's this target that's always, always moving away moving. from us. Yeah, further mm -hmm. and further away. And 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 to when you think about Jesus like the life that Jesus lived would be deemed sinless on paper right um, but it's it's not even what he did in in his fullness it's his motive for doing it was pure yep which which makes it all which makes it all perfect right so it's like even even on my best day yep. is my motive 
a hundred percent pure because right. if it's not then it's wrong mm -hmm. i i think right. it's easy to look sinless right right because i mean you in don't a, see me all the situation. time right right yeah, yeah like yeah when you see me on sunday i mean i can put on a sinless person yeah other people could put on a sinless persona. I struggle with that. Yeah. I got this mouth. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but that intention, that heart. Right. Yeah. It, it betrays. Like, right. it's going to let me down yeah. every time. Every time. Well, and I think guilt is a huge tool of the enemy. Mm -hmm. you That's know, good. Because, yeah. because yes, we, we can never be perfect enough. No. Nope. So the enemy will, even when we are trying to do what's right, yeah. the enemy will use the guilt factor and say, "Well, you were never good enough." Mm -hmm. Right. You know, you'll, you know, it's like you were you were talking earlier about you know um, your the, the the credit score and how things how things yeah. improve over time, right? Yeah. I was thinking about how as a um, as a child, you know, I grew up in a single parent family, yeah, and we didn't have a, a lot of money, right? And so you take those that mindset into your adulthood, and you think, "Oh, well, this will never happen for me." You know, my yes. finances will never be at this yep, place, you're you know, right. and you believe that about yourself. Yeah. And I think it's the same thing with sin. Like you, it, you know, mm. you feel like you condemn yourself and Satan will use the guilt factor yeah. to get you to make other choices that are negative. Right. So I guess the, the, the main thing behind that is, you know, don't allow yourself to feel guilty. Yeah. You yep. know, yeah, that's you, good. you can make a choice right now. The next, the next thing is yeah. fully within your power. That's right. Yeah, That's Kelsey right. Mays jumped in and said, uh, like James was saying, our faith will be shown by a changed life. It's not about doing enough to be saved. That's right. Yeah. 100%. That's right. That's good. That's yeah. good. It's good to see you on, Kelsey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's absolutely true. And this is and this and this is what it kind of piggybacks on the end of the third verse here where it says the first part of it says uh, the law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. Yeah. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinner had, we sinners have. So mm -hmm. it's like Jesus, Jesus did not live in a body that didn't crave what our bodies crave. Yeah. His body was like our bodies. Um, but it says, you know, he sent his, he sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners, we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us right. by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. Mm -hmm. so, so Jesus being confronted with, as it says in Hebrews, there's, there's everything that we are tempted with and face, um, so also was Jesus, yet Ooh. remained sinless. Um, which I don't even know... I mean, I don't even know what that even looks like in some of this <laughs> stuff. I don't know right. what what it means to be sinless um, in in my thoughts and in my mouth. A hundred percent pure. Like I have, no. I have no concept of 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 God's complete purity. I don't even know what that looks like. I have an idea, but I know that my idea is not even close yeah. to 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 the to the reality of it. But that being said, um, you know, thank thank the Lord that he did what he did. Oh, yeah. Because in this, you know, knowing that 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 the law was unable to save me because my because of the weakness of my sinful nature, mm -hmm. my my propensity for natural sin to to naturally yep. sin. It's like breathing. Uh -huh. You know, God, God saved us in spite of that. Um, by sending Jesus who willingly paid the price so that so that we this condemnation that's on the table is completely wiped off the table yeah. We we move toward comfort yeah. and we move toward feeling good. Yep. Yeah, and we were never designed For comfort and feeling good. I mean hmm. he, he put us in the garden But even when he put us in the garden, we had a task. We had a job. We had stuff yeah. that we had to do mm -hmm. so we tend to go toward comfort to our own detriment a lot of the times yeah. we go to we go to what feels good for us in the moment yeah but in the long run it's not going to be good our human nature tends to yeah. pull us away from where we need to be where yeah. god has originally designed us to be yeah yeah and even deeper into comfort right so like yeah. you'll experience a level of comfort in one way mm-hmm 
and then in some ways you now you then you begin to overindulge yep mm -hmm. in that comfort and it becomes um bondage or it becomes yep. a crutch or it becomes um something that that um becomes our go-to that little bit of freedom becomes yeah. a handicap it, right. it becomes a, a chain yeah yeah it becomes a chain you had it's a great, great example um on sunday about this and it, it's it's it was great it was timely because we're all thinking about road trips and doing different things this yeah. summer, right and you were talking about telling somebody to, to go somewhere yeah. Telling them where the end goal was, yeah. but not giving them a map. Yeah. And setting out and then being led completely by how you feel. Right. And, I, and it just reminds me of, of the old saying, you know, when we are left to our own devices. Right. You right. Know? So, so this is where we, we need God's direction. We yeah. need the Spirit to lead us. Yes. Therefore, we are operating. If we don't, then we're operating completely on our own emotions and feelings, and, and we'll get nowhere. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's how, that's how, you know, if like in, in relationships, if you're not, if you're not looking at, at a, a God centered relationship, yeah. if that's not your goal, then you're going to have relationships that are not God centered. Yes. There's yep. going to be a lot of brokenness and yep. strife in your life. And this happens to everyone. Yeah. So, yeah. so we have to be focused on what God wants for us and what the spirit is leading us to do. It's like the, the very last verse yeah. um, in this is talking about, um, he did this so that the just requirement of law would be fully satisfied for us who no longer follow our own sinful nature, yeah. but instead follow, follow the, spirit. the spirit. Amen. Amen. That's good. Yeah. So that's, so that is God's, I mean, ultimately that, that is clearly his desire for us. Yeah. Is for us to be led by the spirit of God and not by our sinful nature. Um, and for us who belong to the Lord, we have, a, and I and I don't I don't I mean for lack of a better word we have an advantage um, that people don't that people who do not belong to the Lord they do not have and yeah. you got people who don't belong to the Lord who are the nicest people in the world right um, but even even in that right that can become you can overcorrect in niceness mm -hmm. tolerating things that shouldn't be tolerated yep. not mm -hmm. having conversations that should be had or allowing things to um to be said that shouldn't be said or and 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 even even accepting those things into your own home into their own home um f just so that they just for the sake of being nice right. so so even in that when it's outside of right because when he talks about led by the spirit of god the jesus said that the holy spirit was the, to, the one to lead us into all truth so even without the spirit of God, niceness can be used out of the um, desired application of it. Mm -hmm. So we need the spirit of God to show us how do we appropriate all of these gestures to people, all of this, these, um, uh, this way of living. How do we do this in a way that still honors the Lord um, and doesn't produce bondage? Yeah. Right. It's just I mean, unbelievable. It's the battle of grace and truth from yeah. the beginning. Like you yeah. can get so caught up in this being nice that you swing a hundred percent grace, but right. you never speak truth. Right. Right. Or you can swing the other way. You only ever speak truth and you never speak. Yeah. Grace. You don't care. Yeah. yeah. So our sinful nature wants us to go with the good part. Like we, we only want to encourage. We only want to build people up. We only want to give people grace yeah. or we only want to give people truth. Nothing in between. Yeah. But it's up to us to rely on the spirit to allow the spirit to lead into, OK, is this a grace moment or is this a truth moment? Yeah, Chances good. are it's a mixture of both. Yeah, that's um, good. You, you can't have truth without grace. You can't have yeah. grace without truth. So well, and being nice is, isn't a qualifier. Yeah. No. Right. Yeah. That that doesn't qualify us for, right. for anything. Exactly. You know, it, in scripture, it talks about, you know, people that that cast out demons in in the name of the Lord. Like yeah. they were able to do, they were able to, to participate in spiritual warfare, but then, but then the end result was the Lord says, I don't, I don't, didn't even know that. I didn't know you. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so, so we can do a lot mm. of great things, but if we don't right. know who Christ is, yeah. we're not going to grow in him. We're not going to, we we're not going to have the benefits of being a child of God. That's right. So we That's definitely right. want those. <laughs> Nothing Amen. quite like Pastor Katie walking through with a big old kitchen knife. That's right. That's right. That's how we do VBS here. That's right. I mean, you've you've never experienced VBS prep like the, the smell right. of spray paint and burning styrofoam. And burning styrofoam. 
So I don't I mean, know what you camera even, to look at. I don't want to fear. You can look at the camera, and it's all kind of hazy. Yeah. That haze is That's styrofoam yeah. um, that we're all just basking in. Yeah. I don't even smell it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, oh. We're going to have to go outside for a few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so as, as we go throughout, you know, our week and as we continue in this month of freedom, um, just know, body of Christ, believers, that, that there is no condemnation for those that belong to Jesus. Yes. And the enemy would love to use, he loves to use, um, Pastor Mike said guilt. Did you say guilt or was that Pastor Chris? It's too I'm much styrofoam guilt. up in here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. I couldn't even so, answer the question for you. Yeah. I, like, I don't even remember. Like, I don't know what I said. <laughs> we said I don't even know where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, but, but the enemy would love to use guilt and turn guilt into condemnation. Because yep. there's a difference between, yeah, I'm guilty of doing this. But my exoneration comes from, from comes from Christ. But but when guilt, when when we don't allow the Lord to deal, right? When when the Spirit of God brings conviction and we're guilty, I did that. I I I said that. I thought that. I went there. I whatever whatever it is. Yep. And we don't allow the Spirit of God to deal with that. Then it as it <clears throat> excuse me as it takes root, it can produce in us condemnation. But what I love about this is this is the Lord reminding his people there is now no condemnation for those who belong to jesus and then he says why and what happened as a result of the lord removing our condemnation so i think those are some some pretty important steps for us to to um, be aware of as believers the first one obviously is we got to know the reality of it is is we're going to make some bad decisions we're going to do things say things that we shouldn't Right. Yep. Um, that go against God's way, um, and that is sin. And when that happens, we then take that and surrender that to the living God. We surrender to Jesus. Say, okay, Jesus, this is um, what I did. Forgive me for this. Train me in Your ways. Teach me to no longer crave, go after, um, operate this way, but but to to operate Your way. Um, and then He takes that. Right. Because um, um, what the what the law was unable to do, God did, which is part two. The first one, we got to remember, you know, I did do something wrong. I surrendered that to the Lord. And the second thing is the Lord took care of that. So we don't have to do penance. We don't have to do, you know, we, we don't have to try to earn the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus was given to us. And then the next thing is, is, is once we understand that the Lord has taken care of that, then we walk in the power of the life-giving spirit um, mm-hmm. and we're able to operate in a way that will, will ultimately fulfill us as the people of God, right? When we yeah. pray for someone and bless someone, um, I don't know about you guys, but, but I love that. Mm-hmm. I oh, love, yeah. you know, to be able to serve people that way. And, mm-hmm. um, and then, then we, that's, that's a person who has moved beyond you know the yeah. condemnation so what do you guys think what some ending thoughts for you guys some closing thoughts i mean for me the big one is to know that it says no condemnation yeah. not like yeah. there's condemnation if or if you do this there's no condemnation it's there is no condemnation through yeah. christ jesus yeah so don't live in it yeah don't that's don't right. live in the condemnation yeah. allow christ to do what only christ can do yeah and yeah. live in that victory that's good yeah. And it's Living okay to be, um, you know, we should be accountable to each other. Absolutely. 100%. You know, and yeah. it's, it's a beautiful thing. You know, accountability doesn't have to happen in courtrooms. Yeah. You know, for believers, <laughs> yeah. accountability should be, should be happening amongst ourselves. Yeah. Like you go to somebody, hey, you did this. You know, that person, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, l- let me repent for that. Yeah. You know, and, and work, work out those things so that, and then once you've been forgiven or once you've forgiven someone, there's no condemnation. Right. Like once, once that has, has happened and you've shown that you're truly repentant yeah. for what you've done, there's no condemnation. That's right. Don't carry it. Give yeah. it to God. Don't let, carry. let him carry it at that point. Let him carry the, um, the, the consequences beyond you know your repentance yeah. let, let him take care of what happens next amen so amen well listen here at the experience podcast we love you and thank you so much for joining us today on this wednesday